Hey guys, this is James Osment, and uh, I forgot I had a couple locks outside on the bicycle, so I'd purchased these locks before I realized how really insecure they really were, but, uh, you know, as uh, I began picking and realizing how easy it was to get into these locks, I had a bunch of cheaper locks laying around, so I figured, well, might as well go ahead and throw about three or four of them on the bicycles, <laughs> instead of having to buy a new secure lock, I figured, you know, you can pick them pretty quick. Most people can't pick. They just cut through it or, you know, other destructive means. And I figured it would take them longer to destroy several locks as opposed to just one. So, but anyways, I uh, went out there and got one off the bicycle just to, just bored, wanted to pick, man. So, go ahead and get this thing started. This is a Brinks uh, disc lock. And there's no way to really gut this thing so I'm just gonna be picking it open for you guys uh, one thing I have noticed about these disc locks is the tension um, because you have to override this locking mechanism and the spring tension is already pretty heavy on these things you do have to use a little bit heavier than normal tension but I've kind of I've kind of learned a trick uh, on these brinks you don't have to use as heavy of a tension. Uh, you just have to tension it heavy once you get it picked. Uh, I'm a, I haven't tried this pick yet, so I'm going to try it first to see if I can make it open the lock. And find the maximum tension. I'm just going to back off just a hair. Kind of hard to work around the camera at this angle, but we'll, do some, we'll make it work. I've picked this lock several times so I kind of know how the bidding is and kind of already have a feel for it. Get that pin in the back down. Now this does have a deep cut in front of a shallow cut so I do got to kind of angle this thing and that's probably not going to work very well. Go ahead and reset this thing. I didn't think that pick would be too effective, but oh well. This lock is ice cold. It's cold outside. And there you see we've got it open. It's freezing temperatures outside here. And uh, I just pulled this lock from outside and man, it's pretty damn chilly. <laughs> Anyways, uh, enough of that with the snake rake. Let's go to uh, just a uh, standard Peterson hook. Number one, it's the Euro profile. It's kind of shaved down a little bit thinner here on the the uh, shank or shaft or whatever you call that. So let me uh, reload my tension tool here. There we go. Probably takes longer to get on that last pin than it did really to pick the rest of it, but there we go. Use a little bit too heavy of a tension that time. You could really hear those pins snapping when they hit the shear line. Try this one more time. And that number three pin, this is a four pin lock. Number three, it's a, uh, I mean, you don't even touch him at all. If you, if you move it at all, you just overset him. I mean, it's probably the, it's got to be absolutely the deepest cut they have. And uh, I'm sure just the, uh, the thickness of this shank is just enough to set him correctly so once you get on that pin four and once you get pin four set then you've already set pin three pretty much trying this with a little bit 
lighter tension just to see how effective it'll be. And there it is. You don't always have to use heavy tension on these uh, on these disc locks like this. It it it's very difficult to feel the pins in here, and I think uh, a lot of the the issue with other other people I've watched videos picking these locks is the feel, the feel of the pins. And as long as I can feel the the pin itself, the spring tension usually does not have any effect on my picking. Now I have got into some rim cylinder, uh, mortar cylinders here lately that are very finicky because the spring tension is just non-existent. It's super light spring tension, but but with these Brinks locks, it's really not that bad. It's uh, you could use anywhere from a uh, I would say in between a light and a moderate tension to heavy tension on these, and you could tension it just about as heavy as you want as long as you can still move those pins. You know, as long as the pins are able to be moved without bending your picks, I'd say any tension in that range is going to be good enough. So, But uh, Brinks Padlocks, guys, four pinner disc lock. I would really urge you to not buy these locks. They're really not that great. Um, the <clears throat> This is, I don't know if I know the size of this. Uh, this is a smaller one. They have a larger diameter uh, set. I saw when I bought this, and they claim that it's the highest security Brinks offers. They have the uh, spool pins and whatnot, the anti-bump. But uh, Brinks, their spool pins aren't that great, <clears throat> and you could pick them rather easy. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, and they are, uh, the larger locks are 5-pin. The larger discs like this are 5-pin, but still, they're, they're still too easy to compromise, so... I'd stay away from those, get you a better lock, guys. That's my video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay legal.